I'm Ronnie James Dio from the band Dio. How odd. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> doing great. Yeah. Doing really well. Are you really on tour now or it's just one off show? Uh, no, we've been we've been on here now for let's see, we've done five German shows, a Belgian show, a couple of so we've we've been out here for about three weeks now. All right. And this cool. will be the last show. Okay. And then we go back home and then we come back again. We have a show in Helsinki in about a week's time. And then three weeks in South America after that. And we come back again and do another show in uh, one in Oslo and a couple in Germany and few more places. And so here in Scandinavia is a big fan of you guys yes. and, and, uh, and Germany of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Scandinavia and Germany I would say are you know, certainly among the, the top ones. I mean Europe in general is so much better than it is in America of course. America has become this real trendy place where mm. if you have won the American Idol show or American Karaoke as I call it uh, then you know you can be a big star but you know that's without uh, learning your trade without paying any kind of dues for what you've done yeah. uh, but that's what America has become it's become a place of trends so it's a lot more difficult uh, to play for a vast amount of people who you know just don't get a chance to hear their music anymore mm. um, the only time you can do well is if you do a festival with you know if it's Iron Maiden and ourselves or Scorpions and Austin Purple or whatever it may be yeah. then you can kind of do well that way but uh, other than that very tough in America but Germany Scandinavia Spain Italy still yeah, really, really, yeah, really love the music, yeah. and they, they stand behind it all the time. So the Americans are totally different than uh, 20 years ago. Oh yes, it's very much different. Yeah, yes. yeah. You're on making money and, and being on television and uh, idols things and stuff, and mm -hmm. how weird is that? Well, you know, it's things like uh, now they have uh, like a guest appearance by someone. So Rod Stewart comes on. Suddenly his album goes to number one. Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. Or Barry Manilow was on the program and his album goes back to number one. Well, that shows you the mentality of the people who yeah. are watching it. Yeah. They're obviously all, you know, younger than 13 years old, or if they are older than 13, their brain is only 10 years old uh, because I, I just find it ludicrous. I really find that without hard work, you really don't get anything that really lasts for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And none of those people are ever going to last for a long period of time. Exactly. And there's so much good music out there that gets forgotten about because it doesn't sell your product. And that's what really the stage is all about. If you can't sell enough pimple cream mm -hmm. with, a, with a heavy metal band, yeah. then you don't get any heavy metal music. But yeah. if you can sell it with, um, with rap or with doo-wop or with uh, you know, Madonna music, then you know, they'll pay attention to you. But not here. Here, people are so loyal. Yeah. They always have been. Uh, you know, hard rock metal is a way of life here, and it's always been looked upon, I've noticed as well, in, in America, if you are that kind of an artist, a rock, a heavy rock artist, mm. then you're always kind of like, kind of look down their nose at you, oh, you're not real, are you? Um, <laughs> but if you're some, you know, wishy-washy, horrible piece of crap, then, oh, love that. Well, that's just, you know, what America happens to be, and that's, that's a shame. Yeah. Yeah, that's and also, like, fashion, because all the rappers go, when they have a number one, okay, let me have this line of clothing and stuff. That's right, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And the money they made is phenomenal for having, you know, I mean, without the talent of the people who they've copied and the music that they've taken and put inside of their songs, because let's face it, at the end of the day, what rap music is is a social comment. Mm. And I don't, uh, to me, the most un unbelievable thing is that it's supported so much more by the white population than it is, I mean, it's supported by the black population, of course. Yeah. But where are these young white kids from, you know, coming from uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, or from, um, you know, some little town in Texas? What do you understand about the social statement that I don't? You've never had to suffer what black people have had to suffer before. Mm -hmm. So how can you? What? Oh, it's all about the music. It seems to me these days it's all. It's more about what what rock and roll was always was: sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's more about the sex part of it. <laughs> Because if you watch the videos, all you do is see people going. Yeah, it's one great big giant hump, and to me, that's nothing to do with music. Do you write about it about these subjects? I haven't no, because when, anytime I've tried to write about something that I I thought was that could maybe change someone's attitude, it never has made any difference. They don't get it. All they hear these days anyway is the beat. Uh, you know, a long time ago, I wrote a song with Black Sabbath, the first one I ever wrote called "Children of the Sea," which is a song about the ecology that we tend to run before we learn how to walk. We do things too quickly. Let's enjoy what we have, and then if we take our time with it, perhaps this planet won't won't explode, and, and perhaps it won't overwarm itself and it won't do all the things that are happening but no one listened mm -hmm. and I've done it a few other times before and no one's listened so I don't really care <laughs> you're my forum I have a chance to tell you exactly yeah hey you got a new album out now a uh, live album uh -huh. it's brilliant I must say um, and also you yeah, have one of the best songs Heaven and Hell of course mm -hmm. for us then I'll um, hear that tonight too yeah oh yeah okay have to what do kind that. of version is this one then 
Uh, the Heaven and Hell one? Yeah. It's the same as the one we'll be doing now. It's the full, the full well, song. Right. Yeah, full on song. Yeah, we've, we've had a tendency before to cut things up a little bit, but only because we have so much material to choose from. Yeah. And sometimes the songs are reminiscent of each other. Uh, uh, Last in Line and Heaven and Hell and Sign of the Southern Cross and All the Fools Sail Away remind you of themselves. So in order to do all the material that we have to do, we have done a medley here and there. But okay. no, not tonight. This is in full version. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, Black Sabbath, you've been in that band too, of course. Uh, what could you remember from that time? Wasn't it weird to come in that band? Oh, no, not for me, was it? No. No, it was, it was great. I enjoyed it. It was probably my favorite time, really. Yeah, uh, was it? Well, I liked them so much as people. I mean, I really did. I liked them because they were working class people like me, like my family. You know, we were not wealthy, nor were they. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, so we felt the same about it. And we really loved the music. And with Tony, I really found a, a simpatico person to write with. Very nice. I've been very, very lucky to have, you know, to be able to write with Richie Blackmore and with Tony. I mean, great combinations are great combinations. And Dio, Blackmore and Dio Iommi were a great combination. Yeah. So it was fun for me to do that. And, I, you know, I liked the guys and the rest of the guys in the band a lot, too. And then Vinnie Apice came with us as well. And he carried on, of course, playing with me and Dio for a long time. So it was a great time of my life. And then we did it, we did it twice. Okay. And it wasn't as much fun the second time, no. Now why not? Well, because as I said before, leopards don't change their spots. No, you know, and mm. so nothing really ever changed. You know, no. my attitude about what about what life is about is different than their attitude okay. about life. Mine is once you're in a band, I thought you're supposed to be in that band forever. Well, that's why I say twice leopards don't change their spot. There's always a reason for it. But we are doing a, a couple songs uh, for a new album, which is called uh, Black Sabbath: The Dio Years. Wow, cool. And we've already, Tony and I have already written one, and we'll be writing one more. Really? Uh, so it'll be giving you value for money, and it'll be remastered and all that kind of thing. So when, when, it's, when's it's not that? that I don't like them, you know. I'm no, a, I, and I love Tony. I, I think Tony's just such a special player, and he's a really, really good person. I like Tony a lot. Yeah. When is that coming out? Uh, it's supposed to be. It was supposed to be released in September or October, but I doubt very much that that's going to happen with all the work I've got to do. Yeah. I don't have time for that, you know. <laughs> and when I do have time, we'll do it. But I think it'll be, should be at the end of the year. I would think end of end of two, 2006. Cool, great. I hope. Good news. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, um, I read about you uh, um, in the bio and stuff and, and books that you're very, very nice to your fans. You invite them to your hotel and, and you just give them like really good time always. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, because without them, I wouldn't be here. They're yeah, the reason I'm here. I mean, you have to thank people for what they do for you. Mm -hmm. I could do it all by myself, but who would listen? And I just always thought in my life, I've been you were taught by my parents that it was a lot easier for you to get things out of people by being good to them than being miserable to them. Mm -hmm. And of course, I played.